Does this guy have a crystal ball or what? <laughs> Get Trump. Get Trump is out there. Exactly what we're seeing play off. Let's go to Professor Alan Dershowitz on Talk Radio 1210. Professor, welcome back to Philadelphia. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. You know, the reason that I turn out accurate in my predictions when I predict that Trump would be indicted is because I never allow my own political preferences to interfere with my predictions, unlike people on CNN and, and MSNBC who give the audience wishful thinking, and they're always wrong. And um, I'm not smarter than they are. I just don't let my political views interfere with it. I'm not a Trump supporter. Uh, I voted against him twice, but I understand the political system. And when a guy runs for DA and and runs on a platform of Get Trump, I didn't invent the name of that book. I borrowed it from the DA and the attorney general who ran on a platform of Get Trump. They better get Trump, otherwise they won't get re- reelected. And so they did the opposite of what American uh, law enforcement should do. First, they named the person. They said, we're going to get Trump. We don't care if there's any crimes or whatever mm-hmm. crimes there are. We'll get Trump. Now we'll rummage through the statute books. We're, we're sure to find something, just as Jackson said. Uh, any prosecutor can rummage through the books and find something on somebody. And they rummaged and they found nothing. And so they had to make up a case. They had to make up, oh, he should have actually, on his corporate form, listed the fact that he paid $130,000 in hush money to prevent his wife from learning that he had an adulterous affair with a with a porn star now has anybody in history ever made public disclosure of what they paid hush money for yeah. and that's that's the basic underlying indictment that's the fraud and then they have to extrapolate and, say, and the reason for the fraud was not to protect his wife not to protect his children not to protect his financial advice uh, investments only to promote his presidency therefore it was a federal illegal campaign contribution but this is a state case but nonetheless, we'll pick a bit piggyback the the state misdemeanor on a federal. We'll, we won't worry about the statute of limitations that this case occurred seven years ago, and the statute of limitations is two years for a misdemeanor, five for a felony. We have nothing to worry about. This is New York. We're indicting him in. Eighty-seven percent of the people vote against him. The judges are not going to throw this case out. It's New York. His name is Donald Trump. We don't have to obey the law. Don't worry. We'll get a conviction. That's their thinking. What do you make of the, well, I guess this is the next line of defense, what they're saying about you and, you know, people like me in talk radio, we haven't seen, there might be a surprise here, 34 counts in your vast experience, the 34 counts probably all revolve around various aspects of this 130,000. No, I think what happened is they actually found the videotape of Donald Trump killing somebody on Fifth Avenue, as he talked about <laughs> early on. Yes. And uh, as a result of that, they've indicted him for first degree murder. No, what they've done is, you know, when my mom used to bring a salami home for dinner and we had a lot of people with a sharp knife, she would cut the salami, one salami into 36 <laughs> slices. And that's what prosecutors do. They take one crime and they say, ah, but he paid checks on this day and that day. So we'll indict him on 36 different counts. It doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, they'll make a motion to consolidate, and that motion will that motion will have to be granted. They're not going to put him on trial for 36 counts. We don't know what the indictment says, but we have a pretty good idea that it's about the hush money and that that's no case. Uh, you have said on several places I've seen you that the statute of limitations in the end, they can't get over that hurdle. What do you mean yeah. by that? Well, it's a five-year statute of limitations. This happened seven years ago. They're going to say, ah, but he was out of the state and we couldn't find him. He was in the White House, number one. (laughs) Number two, you indicted him when he was out of the state. He was in Florida when he got indicted. Why couldn't they have indicted him over the past seven years? There's a very good reason, because no prosecutor would do it. All the other prosecutors who looked at the case said, Mickey Mouse, no, we're not going after this Mickey Mouse case. Suddenly, this prosecutor comes in and he says also, Mickey Mouse, I'm not going after him. Two of his assistants quit in protest. One of them writes a book. Um, I'm just speculating here, but George Soros paid him a half a million bucks to campaign. Maybe he got a call or just thought that he's going to get cut off. There were political pressures. He doesn't bring this case uh, as a, a righteous indictment based on principle. No man is above the law. No man is below the law. And nobody has ever been indicted for anything like this. And you don't use the criminal law uh, to make creative stretching of statutes Mm -hmm. in order to get somebody that you promised to get during the campaign. This is really, really a horrible injustice. And I'll bet you anything that the indictment does not improve on it. Oh, they may indict him for 
for two women, maybe the McDougal woman. Yeah, exactly. And they say that, oh, and the payments continued here. And he discussed, it's going to be about these events. And you don't indict a man who's running to beat your candidate for president, the president. You don't indict him on hush money charges. You, If you're going to indict him, it better be on something very serious. You know, they used to say, if you shoot the king, you must kill him. Uh, and uh, he's not the king, but he wants to be king. He wants to be the right, president. Exactly. And now, you don't interfere with an election on the basis of this kind of stupid case. All right. The book is uh, Get Trump. And yeah. uh, I'm not sure part of the book, but you and I have talked about this before, and I wanted to reemphasize it. Nobody that I know in America could take on this issue better than you for so many reasons. But the Soros mm -hmm. part of it now, now, Soros is not plotting to get Bragg in there, probably to uh, get Trump no. necessarily. But he's putting them in there because we have about one third of the country in population now under Soros backed DAs. You got a million yeah. bucks to spend like here in Philadelphia with Krasner in a DA's race. That almost does it. If the person, oh, of course it does. Yeah. Let, let, let me give everybody a license now. Here's my license. I'm Alan Dershowitz. I am a prominent leader of the Jewish community. I've always been that. Do not hesitate to attack George Soros on the ground that if you do so, it will be anti-Semitic. I am not an anti-Semite. I attack George Soros. He has done terrible things for America and for the world. He is trying to push our country into hard left, woke, progressive scenario. Feel free to attack him. And if anybody says you're an anti-Semite, say Alan Dershowitz says it's OK to attack George Soros. And it is. Well, I wonder what Larry David would say. Any more run-ins of Martha's <laughs> Vineyard or anywhere else with Larry David? No, he, you know, here's a guy whose daughter <laughs> I helped get into college who asked me for my advice over and over again involving your show, came to my house for dinner. Um, and, you know, he was my friend. And suddenly he says, I'm disgusting. I said, can't we talk? No, we can't talk. I mean, that's what's <laughs> happened to America. What's happened to America is we can't talk. I talked to Bill Buckley over and over again. I talk to people who are conservatives over the years. I've always had opportunities uh -huh. to talk to people on all sides of the political spectrum, but not Larry David and not the dumb folks on Martha's Vineyard who did, can't see beyond their immediate bias and prejudices. Did Alan Dershowitz ever debate Bill Buckley? I pay for two. Yeah. I'd like to moderate that. Well, I don't oh, know you, if you I... You can get it. You can get it on okay. YouTube. Just do Alan Dershowitz, uh, Bill Buckley. What, what were you You'll debating? A couple of what were you debating? Well, we debated pornography. We okay. debated gay rights. We debated, I would say we debated six or seven things. So he, he came to Harvard. We had a packed crowd of 2,000 people. Oh, of course. In, in the big theater in which we debated civil liberties. And we fought with each other like children, and we went out and we had a drink. <laughs> well, I had nothing. That's, that's the that, old days. To me, that's America. If I could see a Dershowitz, yeah. I'm going to go look that up. And uh, so for our together. YouTube videos, uh, yeah. on YouTube, Dom, at 1210WPHD, I actually have a little bit of that playing in the oh, background. Oh, okay, uh, perfect. Yeah, Mr. Dershowitz, uh, yeah. professor's. Uh, a little bit different looking back then. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit different. I had a lot of long. I had a lot of long hair. But you know, the best the best way of holding Bragg accountable. It's self-serving, but I have to tell you what's true. Keep my book a bestseller, Get Trump, and that will tell Bragg, somebody's looking. There's accountability. You may be a hero in New York, but around the rest of the country, people are going to say, my God, you abused your authority. You abused your discretion. So I really do hope, you know, I don't make profit off my books. I give my book proceeds, which are fairly small to charity. Uh, but I do care about people reading my book, and I care about the statement it makes when my book sells a lot and it tells people sure. like Craig, you got to be careful. What's the upcoming book too? I know you're always working on one. Oh yeah. I have another book called killing uh, who decides who shall live and who shall die under the law. And uh, that's uh, coming out uh, in a couple of months. Right. And uh, you know, I'm on, on number 53 I'm working on now. So I want to hit 60 before I hit 90. <laughs> Well put. Thank you, Alan Dershowitz. Get Hi, Trump. Pleasure. Get Trump. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Bye. All right. Alan Dershowitz here on Talk Radio 1210. Dan, I'm telling you, those are two giants. Buckley style. The long, <laughs> you know, the tongue coming out. And then Dershowitz. Uh, you can see that on our YouTube channel. Dan, where do they go to see that on YouTube? Yeah, it's YouTube.com slash at 1210WPHT. Uh, please subscribe. We just launched it this week. And uh, it, it's great for moments like this where you have Alan reference something in the past. And then we Bang. can uh, show we it. We have yeah. it there. Yeah. Yep.
By the way, the uh, shaman is uh, getting out. I'm not sure if it's today or yesterday. He did get out uh, 14 months early uh, from the uh, January 6th crew. Now he's in a halfway house. Imagine that guy in the halfway house. But <laughs> that battle's ongoing too. The bottom line, the reason I'm mentioning it, the last thing, and Leslie made this point with President Trump, he's got a great moment on Tuesday. Just stick to that moment. Don't incite anything. Don't go, you know, because the worst thing done here, it's all gravy now. It's all rowing toward independence and others are going, this is just not right. Maybe I should take a second look at this. This can't stand. And you just heard Alan Dershowitz lay out so many points on this, including Soros. All right, coming up, it's time for the lightning round. And we'll have a winner for Captain Chucky's this week. Um, Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays, though, are back. And there's no better place to get in on the Major League Baseball action than FanDuel in partnership with Valley Forge Casino, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Dom, sign up, place that first bet, get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. Ah, uh, Dan, did we call it yesterday? Aaron Judge what a great be call. the first to lead off with a home run. Historic, huh? All right. Uh, I don't know, Dan, you got anything nice for this call, weekend man. that you would take a look at? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at, uh, well, Aaron Noah will not be as bad the next time. I'll go with that here. <laughs> I really like the FanDuel app. Don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Dom to sign up. FanDuel, official partner, Major League Baseball. FanDuel is the official partner of 12th and WPHD.